J. Jake Jackets. Gear up to fire the cannon and hit the ice with your host, Jay Ashdown and Jake Gehringer. Life, uh, finds a way, all right, doesn't it? It certainly does. It certainly finds a way for all of us. <laughs> I know it's been a week and a half since we last talked to y'all, and, well, um, it's nice that we're getting, like, now that we're officially done, more or mm-hmm. less, like, we can kind of chill and slow down a bit. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, we got like a decent amount of topics today, but none of them I feel like are ones that we're going to like spend a ton of time on, which is kind of nice because. Yeah, and nothing's like heavy. Yeah, for once. Like, it, it, it feels like it's almost going to be a very relaxing episode. Yeah, I feel like yeah. and we kind of needed that after the last couple that we had, right? Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, but we got our last uh playoff keppies now that we have a champion. Yeah. And that was another fast series. Keep that in mind. Damn. Like why? It was over quick. I mean, we I think we both I mean, that series to end in six, if I'm not mistaken. And it ended in five. <laughs> so it was only one off from the night's prediction. I feel like the knights were just like, "Oh yeah, all right, hold hold my beer with that one." <laughs> but the ad read's gonna be really quick for the playoff keppies because now that really hockey's over, basketball's over, baseball's the only one really going right now. Uh, we just gotta Nike this and just do it. Yeah. Uh, new customers download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code THPN. Bet just five dollars to score a hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets instantly, and that's on anything really that they have right now. Uh, that's code THPN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. And get ready for this gambling problem? Call one eight hundred GAMBLER in Massachusetts. Call one eight hundred three two seven fifty fifty or visit gamblinghelplinema.org. New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700. On behalf of Book, uh, excuse me, Boot Hill Casino and Resort in West Virginia, uh, gambling problem 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. All games regulated by West Virginia Lottery, please play responsibly. In partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races in Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. 21 plus in most eligible states, including Ohio, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets. This is the important one. Bonus bets expire seven days after insurance. Issuance, excuse me, one bonus per eligible game, opt in required. Required max bet $50, 10 plus leg required for one percentage or 100% boost. Eligibility, wagering, and deposit restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash baseball terms. Like and there we go. That. I could have tried, but I didn't have time. <laughs> take it forever well that's the funny thing now and this is a little inside baseball ha ha um oh we don't even need the disclaimers in the description anymore we just have to read it out fair enough for the next step it's like there you go did you catch all that if not i think i'll still put it in the liner notes anyway might as well might as well right but playoff cap people who skip ahead for the people that skip ahead, absolutely. Uh, playoff Kepis, I think it's easy, man. Uh, you go first. Uh, it's very... Do, it, it, does it have, like, it's Connie Marchie, bro. It's it's our boy. Yeah. It's so he is... The Falcons essence, legend. He is, in essence, the only undrafted player to win the con Smythe. The other one is Wayne Gretzky, but that's because he was There's undrafted. all these technicalities so, over so, like, like, Wayne, yeah. He was on, like, 
Mark just says the only undrafted guy to do this. Yes. Since the yeah. There's a lot of guys I'd love to give praise to, and we'll do that in the recap, but I think it's easy for both of us. We're going to go with March or so. And it's not just because he won the con smite. It's not it's just because yeah. the Knights were so dominant in the playoffs and they had so many guys stand out, and yet he still clearly stood above the others. It's funny because when we talked and debated who the con smite winner could have been, Last show it we were both we were both shoe ins for Eichel for whatever reason, and then we finally looked at just how dominant March he had been. Yeah, and then we were like, "Oh wait a minute, no." It showed in the, in the series too. Uh, I, I think there's something so cool about this guy, not only undrafted, right, but an original Golden Knight. Yeah, I mean, who was who better from the Panthers? <laughs> like, a, you, the, you can't like, write the story better than that for he a was title. He was the cast off. Yeah, like he was. If if you like, if you look at the original six misfits that are still there, mm -hmm. he's the misfit. So it, it's interesting. He was picked i believe because he, riley he, smith was traded like he was exposed yes to the golden knights so they would take on riley smith because riley smith had signed a five-year contract didn't live up to it in year one right. and they wanted to go in a different direction and they wanted to utilize this guy on a on a two-year deal less than a million dollars potting 30 goals in his first season uh it, it would have been like if the leafs had signed Michael Bunting a year earlier and then uh -huh. uh, let him be exposed to Seattle. To the Seattle draft? And, oh boy. To, to protect somebody else or to, to have them take somebody else in addition to help them capitalize. Mm -hmm. That's the best comparison I could probably think of it on the spot. Uh, it's really cool that this guy who – I think they kind of viewed it as, oh, he had a good season for us. He scored 30 goals, but – He's only got one year left, and we don't know if we want to pay this guy because it's only right. one season. We don't know what to expect. So why don't we take advantage of this and get ourselves some cap space by, you know, we'll give you this so you can take on this. And unfortunately for the Panthers. It came back to bite him right in the oh ass. And it's like, wow, in both the worst way are, possible. Both those guys are phenomenal for him. Uh, it couldn't have worked out worse for the Panthers. No, and I – Thinking back to 2017 for a minute, they've got to be the team that got screwed over the most in those rules, right? Like in all the side deals and things. Yeah, so it like, I don't think rules got them. I think they just, I think they wanted to try and make a very shrewd move, uh huh, uh, to let up this this kid that they pri probably didn't view as a long term first line winger right and, and, and granted it is with hindsight it, it's i think yes. it's fair to say not a lot of people probably thought that at the time they probably thought you know this is a top six guy but is he a legitimate first line option because of is one he yeah good season so i like i i get that but you know now that we are in the year 2023 it just it, yeah. it couldn't have worked out worse for them it really oh couldn't. man <laughs> not just those how the way those two guys have produced but the fact that they are able to win their first cup with the knights and they're them. staples of the team and oh. like like at this point like would it not surprise you if both of those guys just finished their careers as golden knights? oh i totally anticipate it like it, it they have to right yeah and there's something so cool about game five bruce cassidy doing the uh the five original uh oh starting all starting five game. yeah yeah set the tone early for this is a special night you know this is but for i can't imagine doing that and then losing the game and then you have to come up with something right. different for game six this is for us and this is for our city and this is all of you know and it's it's funny because everybody 
is dogging on Vegas because of the fact that it only took them six years. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, personally, my opinion is if you're going online talking about, wow, th those fans didn't like, go over the moon nuts when they won the cup, like, I think that's I think that's pretty lame to to do that. Like naturally, yeah. If if you start rooting for a team because they just come here and they've only been here for six years, mm -hmm. anyway, championship, it's cool. But yeah, you're not going to have the same reaction that a Blues fan would have when they win their first Stanley Cup and they've had right. all those years of misery, or a Sabres fan when the Sabres finally win the cup or imagine if it went to fan. imagine if and when the cup. leafs finally do the thing yeah, for like, the first time like, in forever yeah, no shit like, like i don't know what you guys are looking for like they don't need to, you don't need to have that reaction from a fan base to enjoy a championship that reaction came out throughout the course of the season because you watch those crowds at t-mobile they're mm -hmm. still some of the most electric crowds this league has. Also, like, if that was their reaction and they had won the game 4-3, it probably hits a little different. Yeah, like, if it was like 4-3. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like... They were up 6-1, like, halfway through the second period. They knew exactly. they up. They, they, they were in leave-no-doubt mode, for sure. Yeah, like... Um, and we'll talk so, about it in a minute, but... I just think it's lame, and it, it's, it's, it's such jealous loser mentality to to take that approach at vegas fans because you're salty that they want to cut before you we can kind of get into that i guess later in a minute yeah, i'm sure because of the whole idea of how much suffering do you need to go through the answer is none suffering has absolutely nothing you don't to need to suffer yeah, you don't need to suffer like, to prosper. Sports not... sports fandom is still about fun no matter fucking what. It's not a freaking time clock like, oh, it's been 29 years since we won a championship. Now we can win one. <laughs> like, no, it's no, not... no, it's not, it's... no. God, as, God. as much as we like to make the jokes and the conspiracy theories and oh, all of, of that garbage about yeah. the owners and Gary and all this stuff, like, oh, it's this team's turn now. Yeah. Like that's not how that works. It's it's not at all how it works. But congrats to Con Marshy. Yeah, congrats to him. Congrats to the Knights. Uh, by we'll far talk about you guys in just a minute. Good God. But we have a big Blue Jackets hire that we need to talk about first. Yeah, so they went out, uh, reached out to the Washington Capitals, and and got their number one center. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Bringing in Nick Baxman. <laughs> Yep. To we got our guy. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, he had been a European consultant for them for goaltending? Technically, like a goaltending scout. Scout. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. Which is, it, it, this is funny because, so Nicholas Backstrom. Yes. The goalie. The goalie. Yes. This guy was around as a player when we became fans. Yeah. Right? He was with Minnesota for like ever when we He basically to played his entire career with Minnesota outside of like a four game stint with the Calgary Flames. Right. And he is now like because he's, you know, He's on the younger side of your executives and your coaches. He's only 45. Yeah. He was European goaltending, scouting, and development, technically, I guess. Um, And now he's going to be officially promoted to the big club's goalie coach, which yeah, is so awesome. This is a guy. 409 career uh, games played, 354 starts, had a 915 save percentage, a 248 goals against average, 28 shutouts. Uh, he won the Jennings in 06 07. Mm -hmm. uh, he went 23 8 and 6 
that season with a 929 save percentage and a 107 Damn. goals against average as a, as a rookie. As a rookie? As you a won rookie. the Jennings as a rookie. Yeah. With a nearly a 930 just like post lockout. This is a guy whose entire career. That's amazing. He was never, uh, you know, like the most athletic guy. And it's not like he's giant. Like he's not small, but, he, you know, he's not giant like Vasilevsky or anything like that. You know, he's. No. Six- so uh, his game so is. He just was about average time. size for the time. Yeah. He, he's just a technically sound goaltender who relied uh, just on positioning and, you know, IQ. A Braden Holpe like goalie if like that Braden was more or less that kind of guy wasn't he because he wasn't that big not huge uh not crazy not a ton of crazy movement in his game right which you know is what you want for like like unless you're Dominic Koshik you want your game (laughs) or Patrick little movement as possible yeah and this is something specifically I think if anybody watched Elvis throughout the course of the season his movement was that's god awful it it was all over the place now he wasn't he wasn't our boy Peter Morazic but he had definitely lost where his posts were so many times throughout the year and if anybody is going to lock him in to where his crease is. It's someone who's going to, who's, who's A, familiar with him, and B, who predicated their entire career on specifically that. Yeah. I like it. I don't think there's anything to dislike about it. They needed to make a, a change at the goaltender coach position. And uh, I trust that they think this is the right hire because, frankly right off the cuff i think it is well it's funny because for someone like me who you know i know coaching staff Mm -hmm. to a certain degree i know like certain people in the executive branch and player development like what rick nash does and all these kinds of guys right yes i didn't even know he was in the organization for the longest time because yeah, I didn't know that either. I, he, I think it's because it's one of those like you know, like a lot of times you don't realize there's positions that even exist. Like I think we would have known if we knew that European goaltending consultant was a role in the organization. <laughs> uh, and, and if we knew that, we would have seen the name Nicholas Beckstrom and been like, "Oh, that's a name." <laughs> I was like, "Hey, we know this guy." <laughs> but it's good that he has some experience with the organization and. Which which means he has experience with all this. Yes, and he so. has experience with Terry. Mm-hmm. And, Absolutely. And that's more or less going to be your tandem, probably, unless Yarmo goes out and, you know, makes a move, because he's definitely not done. Definitely not done. I don't see them making a move as far as goaltender is concerned, but uh, never say never. You never know. It's Yarmo Kekalainen. and we it's never Yarmo. know. <laughs> Chaos can ensue at any given moment in time. Um. But yeah, I I am curious uh, to see, you know, what kind of impact he's going to have and and what we can, you know, visibly notice about Elvis's game next year. So I'm excited about this. You know, we talk about the can we talk about the whole doppelganger thing? With him too, like just having Nick Backstrom, the goalie and Nick Backstrom, the skater and how that's a thing. Uh, I thought you were talking about that... actual doppelganger. Like I was wondering, like if there's <laughs> he actually looks like. I I mean, probably he kind of looks like Brendan Shanahan. If I'm being honest, I do not see that at all. He looks like a European shanty. I don't know, <laughs> but like so that's when we first heard Nicholas Backstrom, right? Fans like us knew that there's a goalie and a skater. Yeah. Casual fans probably don't. Yeah. And then, I mean, it really just kind of boils down to that. Yeah, I mean, have... if you're one of the Blue Jackets and you started around the time that uh, they won the series against Tampa or whatnot, you know, you would have missed his entire career. You wouldn't have seen him for right. years. Because he so, finished in what, like 2017, 18? Somewhere. Uh, oh, it was earlier okay. than that, I think. Probably 2016 sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, 
get those three games with uh, the Flames, and that was it. And it was just like, oh, this is weird. Him being in a Calgary Flames uniform is like imagining Mika Kempersoff in a Sharks uniform. But yeah, there. Well, it's like for goalies, for skaters that have been with pretty much one organization their entire career. It's like imagining Miko Koivu in a blue jacket. Strip. In a blue jacket, yes! <laughs> and it's funny because we saw that, and I loved Miko here, but shit, it's like, it's so weird. I can't even say I loved him here. He was here so shortly, I was like, oh, he's... I'm he had like two moments that I was like, yep, let's let's do this. I love it. Um, But that's the thing. So if you're a newer fan, like say post-sweep or whatever... Um, you really only know about Ovechkin's right hand man, yeah, Nicholas Backstrom, which is funnily enough because they're both Swedish guys. They spell it the exact same way. Yeah, so one is is Nick Backstrom, N I C K, and then the other is N I K. It's like that's the only difference. Yeah, and the the one we have is missing his captaincy. If you will. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, congrats to uh, Nikki on the promotion, man. Like that's that's going to be great for both Elvis and Terry, I think. Hopefully he has like, I don't know if goaltending coaches at the NHL level also have a say in like who Trent's going to have now. like. Uh, I don't know about that, but, you know, all members of the organization, in, in as far as staff are concerned, are in constant communication with each other, the whole point. Right, so I'm uh, sure, I'm sure Vogel has his dude. You know, they're going to look for someone who kind of preaches kind of the same message that uh, Backstrom will, because, you know, everything that Cleveland does are things that the Blue Jackets do, like they're going to run the yes. same systems and everything like that. Make it so, you know, if, if players get called up or if they get sent down, it's plug and play, easy. Well, that um, just makes me afraid for when Babs is actually officially named, because, like, God, what is that going to do with Trent's whole idea of how to run the monsters? <laughs> I don't think it's going to impact it too much. I would hope not. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, he's still, he's still Trent. Like, that's not going to change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And speaking of the monsters, funny thing, um, there was a lot of Columbus flavor in the Stanley Cup final. Yeah, he had uh, Jonathan Marchessault, who, who was once a Blue Jacket. Falcons legend. You had William Carlson, who was obviously... taken from us Yeah, in the expansion draft. God, I... He was having a. Bill, he Bill had Zito. himself a night at that fucking parade, bro. Oh, like, he did. Oh. Yes, he did. <laughs> Jonathan Quick, uh, obviously, he spent a long time in Columbus. Legendary uh, Blue Jackets. Unbelievable Quick, run. Yep. With the Blue Jackets. Uh, Undefeated run, even. There is Bill Zito for, for the Panthers. Uh, Anthony. Oh, Duke, Duke yep. Um, Bobrovsky. Bob. Oh. Bob. <laughs> uh I miss that yeah. guy and it sucked not seeing bob get a cup but at the same time it, it it was also a little relieving that well because we got winners either way right personally like i don't want to say i was rooting against bob because I, I i'd never root against bob but never there no. was a little bit of part of me like kevin love with the miami heat where i was a little relieved that they didn't win a title with another <laughs> team yeah yeah that's you want them to be remembered for the years they spent with you i mentioned Uh, the monsters earlier and you know how trent was big with them and everything um ryan craig he's on vegas's staff i didn't know that pretty sure he's gonna get his name on the cup that's pretty cool i think i saw Svo say something about Craiger. So, um, so that just makes me like, yeah. So there's a lot of players that were in this final that were, you know, related to this organization in one way or another. Yeah. It's pretty um, cool. And it's uh, really cool to happy see. Happy for, for guys like 
William Carlson, Keegan Polzar. Uh, Keegan, yep, former yeah, third rounder, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, really, when it comes to recapping the series, it was just <laughs> Vegas was really the only challenge Florida had. Like Florida had their way. I don't with know most if I want to the... say that because of Boston. Even then, though, it just feels like Vegas just... It was less of a challenge as much as it was they just couldn't handle them. They just didn't know how to get around it. Um, I think we got the chance to see just how unbelievably valuable Matthew Kachuk is because... yes. That team with him hurts, whether like when he was not playing and when he was playing, but was playing very, very injured. Yes, when he was playing as poorly as he was. Yeah. And we know. And and what did I say before the series? If there's any team that was equipped to to shut him down. Now, Grant, I didn't know at the time that he was injured, but. None if there's any team that was equipped to shut him down, it would have been the Golden Knights, who all six of their defensemen are 6'2 or bigger. Yes. They've got the best defensive forward in the National Hockey League and Mark Stone. The Conn Smythe winner is the only guy on their entire roster that is under six feet tall. Yeah. How crazy is that? I, I think it's... <laughs> There, is, there is a little bit of a formula there, I think, because obviously, you know, playoffs get super physical. Yeah, uh, and, and I mean, the, size like, isn't everything the with how the game is now. No, like, so yeah, like, like let's let's get into that. Like, of course, this isn't a tale of you can't win with shorter players or right. undersized players. It's more so that. There is an advantage to having size in the playoffs. But yes. now granted, the because... size of the play. You can't put together a defensive core of Erica Branson and Tyler <laughs> Myers and uh, all these other guys and, and expect to win. You need to have guys who have skill to yes. the game. Alex Petrangelo, Shea Theodore. Alec uh, Martinez. Cloud, Alec Martinez. Oh. All these guys. They're huge, and I don't, you know, they're huge. <laughs> like, yes, they are. But there's not a single guy, like, big guy that the Knights have that you're like, he's they're... big, but he can't play. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're, like, there's a skill and size quotient that all their players meet, and yes. that's why they succeed with it. They don't what did you, ta- what did you talk skill. about? They don't sacrifice skill for size. They just have both. What did you talk about? What was your big word? Uh, versatility. Uh, balance, balance, bro. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, like the, the, the versatility, balance, all that shit. Like, <laughs> what was their flaw, Jake? I, I asked this question earlier. I'm going to ask it again. What is their flaw? I just, I look at that roster. I don't, I never saw one. Throughout the entire playoffs, I we didn't... never saw one. I can't remember the last time I felt that way about a team. And I mean, this goes back to like when my dad was watching a couple of games and talking to me about him. Um, because unfortunately, you know, with my work schedule and everything, I couldn't watch anything. Um, and that's that goes back to all the games being on cable too and all this garbage with being able to just get the games out there for people. Yeah. Which is its own can of worms. Uh, but like we know that the Florida Panthers are a very fast team. Yeah. Vegas beat them at their own game. Because Vegas can play all different kinds of games. <laughs> Vegas knew that speed was the Florida game and they were like, well, we're just gonna be faster. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't catch us. We're going to spread, you know, like these passing lanes. You can't even block any of the passing lanes, even when they're all spread out across the surface. Yeah. Because the passers are so crisp. They're so 
tight. The dump-ins are rung right around the board's edges. Everything had the most pinpoint accuracy. Every pass, every shot, every change, every save, everything that Vegas did was, it felt so calculated, did it not? Yeah, it, it's like, what do you do? What are you supposed to do when you have strengths and weaknesses to your team? Mm -hmm. And the things that you have, the strengths, you relied on heavily. They 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 were they're you know super physical, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they use that to their advantage against Toronto. They use that to their yep. advantage against Carolina. Against they Boston, they were able, able to, to match to, that up. And granted, Boston was was tighter because Boston's a physical team too. Yes. But what do you do? And playoff hockey. Let's just say this on. too. What? Let's just say this too. Playoff hockey in itself versus the regular season. It's different. It's miles different. It's, it's just, just it's a, a different. different it's game. like it's hard to explain how different of a game it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It is. You know, I I think to like like my my question, Jake. What do you do when the things you've relied on mm -hmm. your your biggest strengths? Yes, things that are covering up your weaknesses. The other team are better at that. It's just better. Forget about exploiting your weaknesses. They're somehow exploiting your strengths. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not to say that Paul Maurice is a terrible coach because he's no, not. No, he, he did a fantastic job this this playoff. But he did everything he, he could. To do? He like, did everything he like, could. Three of the five games they played in this series, all in Vegas, weren't close. No, no. It was a 5 2, 7 2, and then 9 3. 9 3, yeah. None of those games were close. No. You had no, two no. close games in Florida. You won one 3 2 in overtime. You had lost the other one 3 2. Mm -hmm. You could not hang with them on the road. No. There's just uh, people want to say all the stuff about Vegas fans and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm looking at uh, Vegas's uh, home ice record in the playoffs. Uh, don't think, don't think there's an issue. There. I don't. I don't think the fans are the problem, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I really don't. I, I I feel confident in ranking this Vegas team up there as one of the best champions we've seen since the lockout. In terms of overall dominance, 200%. It, it is just... interesting. Like, I struggle to, to wonder who I would rather take between this year's Vegas team and last year's Colorado team because they're up to two. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's... Because it's mm -hmm. like, don't get me wrong, like, Vegas is great, but then I think about, like, well, they got Nathan McKinnon and Kale. McKinnon and Kale. <laughs> and, and, then, then, and they well, had the, Landis Gog was healthy at the time. They Landy Randy was healthy. They, they had... Free, like, I'm like, oh. They had Nas, <laughs> they had Burra, they had... They had the most yeah. important piece in Jack Johnson. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it was... It was uh, it's a tough call there. I'm not gonna lie. That's a very tough call, yeah. I kind of want to see... Vegas and the twenty, like it, like you do, like you do. Give me, a, give me the twenty twenty Lightning and this Vegas team. I was thinking like your last four champions, uh, and I and you know back to back for Tampa, so I'm going back to 2019 here. Blues, right. Bolts, Avs, Knights. Knights. I mean, I, I think Blues are are fourth. <laughs> And well, then yeah. it's the other three, like, I put them ahead of the 2018. I put all three of those teams ahead of the 2018 Capitals. Uh, this way, it sound crazy. I put them ahead of the Penguins. And those Penguins teams were good. Those Penguins teams were phenomenal. And they were wonderfully coached. Mike Sullivan was Such a good just job. brilliant. Um, just masterful. Put them ahead of the 2015 Blackhawks. John Cooper, Craig Berube, Jared Bednar, and Bruce Cassidy. Yeah. 
those dudes just they just knew there has to be bergeron knew embarrassment right now if you're the boston bruins firing bruce cassidy bergeron knew yeah didn't he tell didn't isn't there a thing that says he told mark he told stone yeah, he was. He guessed. Uh, Mark Stone called him and was like, "Oh, if you guys hire Bruce Cassidy, you'll win a cup." Now I don't know how a hundred percent serious he was when he said it. We don't know, right? That just, like that. Just... I imagine since it's Patrice Bergeron, it was very polite, but it was also very dry. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, Bergie, Bergie's that kind of yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, and it's not that, look, I, I don't want to sit here and say, like, Boston made a grave mistake because there are obvious issues that with with Bruce Cassidy that weren't resolved around the team. Things were a little tentative. They needed to make a change, but, man, ugh, that guy going elsewhere and winning a cup immediately and you lose in the first round to the team he beat. Yeah. Uh, especially after you won the President's Trophy. It's just such a bad look for the Bruins. Well, it's funny because there was this whole thread talking about who is the worst loser of these playoffs. Mm -hmm. It's the Rangers. Yeah, and it was like, I never understood how that so matter Rangers worked. lost to the Devils. Right. Devils lost to the Hurricanes. Yes, the Hurricanes and the Rangers lost. The Panthers. Panthers lost <laughs> to the Golden To the Knights, Panthers. yeah. So the Rangers, in my opinion, are are probably the biggest losers of these playoffs. Woof. It's like like I look back at some of these Blue Jackets teams that lost in the first round, and you feel a little bit better when you lose to the Penguins and they win the Stanley Cup, and you yes. lose to the Capitals and they win the Stanley Cup, and you lose to the Lightning and they win the Stanley Cup. And they Cup. win the Stanley Cup. You lose to the Bruins in twenty nineteen and they at least get to the final. They lose in game seven, like, but they almost won the cup. Like yeah. you feel a little better. You lose in the first round to a team that loses into the second round, and that team loses to the team that loses in the third round, and that team loses to the team in the cup final. If it's oh just my a, God, that is it's just a oof. Jesus. Are we missing anything? Like no, I think we're we're covered as far as the final is concerned because I don't know what else we can talk about. It was such freaking dominance <laughs> the entire time. I feel bad for Sharks fans. Yeah. Fourth round pick, baby. That's, That's all it takes. Pick better be a Hall of Famer. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all it takes to oh, get your man. Stanley Let's Cup winning goalie. Last thing I'll say to wrap this up. That dude, Aiden Hill, is going to get so much money. <laughs> I love this guy. Like, all of these guys, say what you will about certain players and Vegas's mentality and how cutthroat they've been and what have you. Hmm. Bill Foley said, give us six years, give or take. Yeah. That was that his was original plan. Yeah. His original plan was year six, was it not? It was. <laughs> and for me, I just want to end it by asking the question, where did he buy his time machine? He got it from Gary somehow. My second question is, how long do I have to wait until I see my team fucking win a Stanley Cup? <laughs> I want to show you this real quick before we move on to our buddies in New Jersey. Because mm -hmm. this was just something funny that I found about a week ago. Yeah. That just, like, I don't know what it is. Gary Bettman. And I'm going to put this up on the screen. So, like, here's Gary. Mm -hmm. Boo this man. All, all you want, right? Gary Bettman looks like that evil mf -er from iCarly if he was old. And Ooh. here's Neville. Oh. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you see what I'm seeing? Do you see what I'm seeing here? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, you just blew my mind, dog. Dude! Whoa. Wow! 
I'm going to need, like, the rest of this podcast to process that. <laughs> well, you need to process a jersey number first. And that jersey number is 63. Six away. I know. It's almost really nice, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's a nice deal, though. I really like this deal. Our buddy Jesper Bratt and the New Jersey Devils locking him up long term. We were. It was only a matter of time before we we're going to hear about this right because well, i all the group chats that i've been in this has been a talking point for the last two freaking years with this guy well like fitzy and, this was fitzy's top priority right well i mean one a one b with timo i would say uh, yeah and they're working on but timo now i would say probably one a simply because getting brat done first makes things easier and and less complicated to do Timo. Yes. Seven point eight seven five average uh, value. Which the did you see what the total amount is over the full eight years? Sixty three million. Yeah. That's that's and okay, can we talk about Steve and his whole jersey number thing? Cause like I think it's fun. I, I think never like, I I don't like it when it's like we're gonna give this guy eight point four oh seven million and the oh sevens because he wears number seven. Like that shit annoys me. But like doing sixty three million over eight years, like that's kind of cool. Yeah. I don't mind it when it's like it actually like makes sense for the contract, like just under eight million dollars for Jesper Bratt, like that makes sense to me. Going full eight yes. years, that makes sense to me. The fact that it comes to sixty three million dollars is just really cool. But it's fun, yeah. When when you go out of your way, like I'm not gonna lie, like it, it was kind of annoying seeing oh Zach Marinsky's making nine point five eight three million. I mean Austin with the O three four at the yeah, end like, of his on, like, is... good board. Was it? Isn't Mitch's ten point eight nine three because he wore ninety three yes. in London, right? Yeah. Um, it's like, don't be cheesy with it. Mm -hmm. That's really it. Yeah, well, this wasn't really even cheesy to like. I think it's cool, but like, it didn't come off cheesy to me because, just simply put, the dollar amount makes sense. I, Tom Fitzgerald has done such an unbelievable job these last two oh awesome. yeah he i think for a lot of people was kind of an unknown commodity as a general manager a lot of people aren't sure about him and i right. think it's very much cemented himself as a very very solid and reliable general manager in, in this league people trust him now you look at some of the moves he's made whether it's you know trading or, or yeah trading to get mm -hmm. john marino mm -hmm. uh you know signing this really good deal with Jesper Bratt, oh trading my God. Timo Meyer and not really giving up a whole bunch that San Jose probably would have wanted for a player like that. He's basically exactly a year older than you are. Bratt, yeah. We share a birthday. He's yeah. like, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's crazy to me. And he's yeah. only he's only 5'10". He's usually played first second line minutes usually first right yeah he's usually playing first line minutes they, they like to put him up there up top with jack i'm curious to see what they do next year a full season with timo meyer if they want to put him on the second line at center or at wing what do you do with that i think that uh with with nico and with nico yeah. you have to put timo on the wing timo's right? a winger and i think that's how the the devils view him so we'll see what they do there but as far as brad's concerned man the big thing for me was finding a way to to keep him for under eight million dollars and yeah. the fact that they're able to go the full eight years and get him there it's a great deal let's go over what he did this year uh and his career so the playoffs this year he played in 12 games he did not perform one goal, five of six. He was a half a point a game. He looked lost more often than not, though. It was a concern. And he it was, was he was a minus three, so yeah. That, that it was a point of emphasis for Devils fans. 
I think there's a lot of relief right now in New Jersey simply because these last couple of years, there's been a lot of frustration with Brat because <clears throat> people wanted to get this guy locked up and, right. you know, negotiations have been kind of a pain in the ass with him. And, uh, you know, on top of that, he didn't play well in the playoffs. So that kind of added a little bit more food to the fire. Now that he's locked in, I think it's going to make things a lot easier for him. Mm-hmm. And I think, I don't know if I want to say that, but like the, the contract negotiations were playing a factor in the playoffs, but I think with him being able to play a little bit more free now, being locked in, I, I'm not concerned about his playoff performance going forward. Does he build on this past regular season? Because this year he played in all 82 games, 32 goals, 41 assists for 73 points. Back to back 73 point seasons, right? Uh, I don't know. This only lists his 22-23 stuff. I'm fairly it's certain he's got back-to-back 73-point seasons. I think he'll... I don't think his ceiling is much higher than where he's at right now. I he's a 30-goal scorer, and he's like... He's a 30-goal guy who I think it is going to typically give you anywhere from 70 to 80 points. Yeah. That's very good. It's That's extremely really, good. Really good. It's really good value for a young guy who was a sixth round pick. Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's developed great. Uh his underlying numbers are, are phenomenal. His, you know, regular stats are phenomenal. You can see the impact he has in the game. 389 career games, 102 goals, 174 assists for 276 points. I think it stands for itself right there. I like this player a lot for good reason. I like this deal a lot for the Devils. Every time I hear his name anymore, I can't stop thinking. Remember when Kanj was the play-by-play guy a couple of years ago? Oh, yeah. That one goal that Jesper scored where he just screamed his name, Jesper! And it was just the most yeah. electric little scream. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's just like... My favorite call from him was the one the Blake goal the Blake Coleman goal against the the Jets the one handed uh-huh. oh one handed magic the yeah. one handed goal and then they ended up blowing that game <laughs> oh. <laughs> they're up four nothing at one point but oh my like, goodness Blake Coleman got yeah. this Kinge yeah it, uh I like their new guy though a lot oh yeah he's fun he's I mean for someone like me he's not Kinge but like he's he's got a fun style and I mean. Ken kind of makes those broadcasts anyway. Yeah. That's, it's, like, yeah. it's the Ken Danico show. Come on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> I really like this deal for the Devils. I like where the Devils are heading right now. Uh, and I like, so uh, real real quick, we don't need to go into this, but uh, obviously the Blue Jackets traded for Dame Severson earlier yes. as the second sign and trade. Uh, apparently, Fitz isn't done. He's looking to make the third and fourth sign and trade oh he wants to do more i think okay. he wants to i think he's trying to find partners who will give up draft picks to do a sign and trade for tatar and for graves i think gravy makes sense and tatar you could do that yeah um uh, but great i think it will happen with graves whether or not we see another one from the devils will remain to be seen but uh right, I love right. doing this i think this is really really smart business I like that they brought in Travis Green to take uh, Brunette's spot. Yeah, that's another. I really like that hire a lot. It's a really smart hire, yeah. yeah and that just happened, didn't it? It happened like earlier like today. The, when, the other day. and, and A couple of days ago. Green, you know, obviously had very mixed results in Vancouver, but I think a lot yeah. of us know now with that roster. That, well, that was also a gym kind of leaned roster. Towards, and we know... He had things stacked against him. He had two years, I believe, where he had the Canucks power play in the top five in the NHL. Travis Green is a very underrated coach in this yes. league. As as a guy that was mainly like a middle six player mm-hmm. in his career, very, very underrated guy behind the bench. I think I think we're gonna see it happen. I think the devil's funny enough, like for as long as Lindy Ruff is coaching there, yeah, they're gonna kind of become that very sexy destination for coaches who Maybe aren't getting head coaching offers, but we can get one a year down the line. So you go out and you get an Andrew Burnett for a year. Right. You get a Travis Green. I can totally see them 
having another good season. And next year, Travis Green is the head coach of, uh, you know, some team in California or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because Brunette went to Nashville, and I wouldn't be surprised if Travis goes back to the West Coast. Yeah. Uh, something we'll like see that. who wants to go there afterwards or if, or who knows maybe 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 uh lindy's closer to retirement than we think and and travis, and travis just takes it yeah you know you never know but i, I think uh assistant coach for the new, new jersey devils has to be one of the better more attractive spots in the nhl right now right now absolutely uh and a brilliant brilliant deal for our dude jesper yeah just like amazing work from fitzy there they're gonna um, be good for a while. It's funny how much we fawn over the Devils on this show because mm. they're a rival team, right? Yeah. But we just have too many friendly connections with the Devils to like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. To just like make it a an actual like rivalry we just we're friends with two, like your girlfriend's a devil's fan come on yeah. <laughs> yeah i was just on neil's podcast a couple of episodes ago shit i i love new jersey i really do they're such a wonderful organization it's funny because i see team. like devil's fans and blue jackets fans going after each other like all the time because it's kind of become a little bit of a rivalry over the last year and like Devils fans shit on Columbus, Columbus fans shit on Jersey, and I'm just sitting here like I like both. <laughs> why can't like we? Both. Why can't nice we... places? Come on, get along, people. You know, it's funny because like I feel like you and I are like the two dudes from the road to El Dorado when it comes to this conversation, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like both, both, both is good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, really great deal for Jesper Bratt, and I hope he continues this kind of similar pace. If he breaks out and goes like forty, bro, yeah, shit. <laughs> Especially with like, if we get a healthy Jack, a healthy Nico to just play everything, mm -hmm. Bratter's gonna put up some points. Oh, no doubt. Uh, now moving on to one of our other favorite teams, the Vancouver Canucks. <laughs> Speaking of Travis Green. Oh, oh boy. So the what buyout the Canucks do now. The first buyout window just opened up, right? Uh oh, did you freeze? No, no. Okay, I'm you're good. You're good. Ass off because this is just so funny. I remember this is one of the first like trades we ever covered. Yeah, isn't it? It's it's really weird that it's all coming full circle now. Isn't it? And we were like, man, a buyout's going to look terrible for this deal. And the Canucks just went ahead. Uh, and did it anyway. So, okay. Uh, first buyout window goes until what? Like the 30th? Yes. Okay. So they got about a week and a half left of the first window. And then we get through like a week or two of free agency. And then they have another one. Mm -hmm. Something like that. I believe so, um, yeah. But we got one big buyout so far. Mm -hmm. One big one. Big. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure we've had like one or two others. Because I know I just read. Or, oh, or, Patrick I, Nemeth and Zach Nemeth, Cass Nemeth and Cassian, right? Yeah. Out of Arizona. And those are, I mean, like, Nemeth was a foregone hey, conclusion. Hey, there's, there's a defensive opening in Arizona. Hey! I wonder. <laughs> And can uh, we bring, should I mention that little tidbit that I texted you? Which which one? The one about the draft pick. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Do it. I was dying at that. <laughs> so the Arizona Coyotes, which is, you know, OEL's former team before mm -hmm. he went to Vancouver. Um, and they're all in disarray, as we all know. Mm -hmm. They have 12 draft selections for the 2023 draft right yeah the amount of players they have signed to a contract 11 <laughs> i can't believe that that's nuts <laughs> that's absolutely nuts <laughs> it's so weird they have more draft picks than they have dudes actually signed right now the Arizona Coyotes are such... 
like they are the reason why like like relegation oh. should exist <laughs> god man wow okay we lo- so Oliver Ekman Larson this guy is going to be sick on the lightning next year <laughs> yeah he's gonna fit right in on that third pair isn't he Oh man, he's gonna cook. You're gonna see him back in prime form. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll fit in Pittsburgh with noted Alan Walsh client Jan Ruda. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I think Pittsburgh's looking for a little bit of defensive help, aren't they? Yeah. Uh so should we just refresh the original deal, I guess? Yeah, so uh the coyotes in Vancouver, Jim Benning. And Billy Armstrong. Oh man! Um, it was they decided Oliver to make a swap with some with Connor salary. Garland. Yeah, and, and, and a Garland. bit of salary retention. Yeah, for Louis Erickson, Antoine Roussel. Uh, there's a center. Who am I? Beagle. 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 Jay Beagle. Oh my god. <laughs> Jay Beagle. I remember I remember that easily because of the Tyson Nash thing. Oh man, Jay Beagle. Those three expiring awful contracts. It was last year their contracts. Exactly. They're all expiring. So they're just like, I'll take them. This, these are the sexiest deals we could imagine. Help us get to the cap floor. Yeah, they were uh, absolutely cap floor deals. Uh for the ninth overall pick, uh, which they used to pick Dylan Gunther. Yeah. Who I do like a lot. And Gunther is going to be, I think Gunther, once they do, if they do, get him signed, he'll be their 12th signee. <laughs> so they'll match their draft picks. I thought he was already under contract. Is he? Yeah. I know he's going back to college for this year. College? Was he not a college kid? Are you thinking, you're thinking of Cooley. I am thinking of Logan Cooley, you're yeah, right. No. Gunther was was uh, sent back to uh, juniors. Major junior, okay. Uh, but he'll be a full time member of the Coyotes. He's under contract. Uh, I like it. Here's the thing: like I, I like him a lot. Yeah, I think he's gonna have a similar career trajectory as Connor Garland. Ah, <laughs> so it's like the the Coyotes get Connor Garland the or Connor Garland. Connor Garland. Garland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um OEL OEL was the main centerpiece. Cap. <laughs> centerpiece in a cap dump by Jim Benning. Yeah. Um or no, they were it was a cap dump by Armstrong. Never mind. I, I don't know why I'm getting so confused on which went where. You're getting confused because it because was a it's a strange deal for both teams to make. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's just like the whole my brain is so hockey fried. Yeah. Even even though like I love talking bad. about this sport with you. Cold beer on a Friday night. Yeah. I I love this sport. I love doing this show. The burnout's real though. The burnout does get pretty real, doesn't it? Yeah. We need to have a couple episodes where we just talk about what the fuck ever. <laughs> with some hockey sprinkled in there, right? I it's feel like, like that kind of just is her podcast, is it not? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, talking bit. about random shit with a little hockey sprinkled in. But I, I guess, know. yeah. Are we talking um, about the same J. Jake Jackets podcast? <laughs> <laughs> um, so OEL and Garland go to Vancouver and Oliver Ekman Larson to the Canucks. <laughs> technically was supposed to be like a mentor for quinn hughes or at least like some sort of Uh, no let's not sugarcoat this okay jake let's not be nice here they got oliver ekman larson because jim benning was their general manager and they thought they were getting oliver ekman larson (laughs) they thought they were getting the oliver ekman larson 2016 oliver ekman larson that was like norris caliber oel And That's... in fairness to OEL, his first year in Vancouver, it was great. It was actually, awesome. He actually like really rebounded and, and looked pretty good. 
his second year in Vancouver. <laughs> he went right back to the <laughs> Uh, and I mean, yes. So the focus here is on Oliver. They went ahead because the Canucks don't have money right now. Yes, they literally do that missed not. the playoffs and was not very good and sold at the deadline. They still have no cap space. They just don't have money to spend. Yeah. And we're talking about we're talking about one of the owners that's actually got some deep pockets here in Francesco. Yeah, no, 100 percent. But like they just don't have any cap space, any money to do anything like if you don't buy out Oliver Ekman Larson, how are you going to be able to give Michael Bunting an eight million an eight year deal? <laughs> I wonder if he does go there. How so, are you going to sign Alex Kerfoot to a five by five? Right. How are you going to get Zach Aston Reese? <laughs> and... I love how we went all former Leafs. It was like my intention. I was just like, who is a good player, but is a terrible idea to sign to a long term deal? And the first names that came to mind were Kerfoot and Bunting. Matt Murray, let's do it. It's like, oh my God. Hey, Pittsburgh connection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like you say that right now is a joke. I actually, it would not be fine. Do, yeah. In a couple of weeks, we see Matt Murray is saying a one-year deal with the Vancouver Cubs. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, Patrick, don't do it. They need to stop hiring <sighs> guys named Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But just wait. The Stars are eventually going to fire Jim Nill, and he's going to be the next one in. Oh, my God. He's going to be fantastic. <laughs> His first move is to trade for Jamie Benn. <laughs> yeah. And Tyler Sagan. Oh, God. <laughs> just a mess in Vancouver right now. Oh, and I don't see it changing anytime soon. No. It's so, actually... should we actually talk about the buyout itself? Just read the details of the buyout, and then we can move oh. on. I don't think so, we need to tell people who are listening how bad this buyout is. So, okay. For this year, it's actually not bad. Oh, this year it's great. The immediate returns you get on a buyout are fantastic. Are awesome. It's the long-term implications that yes. kill you. So, Arizona, because they uh, retained on this, they actually do have to eat some of this as well. Which is dumb. But they're also eating, like, chump change out of it. They are. The thing that pissed me off is that less about how, like, much money they, they have to eat. It's more about the fact that they don't get that spot back for retained salary. Mm -hmm. So for the next eight years. Oh, that one of their retention spots is still being used? Yes. Oh, that, yeah, that is very stupid. I don't Yeah. I don't like it, that. It's getting used because they actually made a smart deal to dump a contract away that they didn't want anymore. And then that makes me came, that traded for that contract was like, oh, this is bad. And like, I don't think that they should be punished for that. No, that just makes me feel bad for them again. And I hate feeling bad for this team right now. The same way that the Canucks got absolutely fucked by the Roberto Longo cap recapture penalty. Oh, yeah, after he retired. Which is also dumb as hell, but that's another topic for another day. So, okay, Arizona is eating barely three hundred thousand for every mm -hmm. year of this buyout. The problem, especially on the Vancouver side, is how long this is because this buyout is eight years. <laughs> this buyout goes until twenty thirty one. It's like, do you remember when I first asked you how like 2023, 24 sounded like it was a million years in the fucking future? Dude, it sounds like foreign. Like, that's not a real it's, year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 2031. Yeah. 31. You know what's crazy about that? In 2031, the Blue Jackets will be 31 years old. Oh my God. Doesn't that sound nuts? Oh. God, we're both going to be, like, we'll be in our 30s by that point. Yeah. Oh. 
crazy. It's like just wow. Um okay, my brain just fried because I was thinking about time shit. Um Vancouver's cost for this buyout, right? Uh little over so basically they pay in the actual cost. It's two point one million dollars every year of this buyout. Yes. The problem comes with their cap hits. The cap hits. The cap hits are like so okay. funny. So this year it's hilarious because it's not even a league minimum deal. It's like it's like an ECHL deal. Oh yeah, like I said, early parts of a buyout are great, but the second it gets later in the buyout, you're just like, fuck. <laughs> this this summer it's barely one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yep, it's like nothing. Yeah, right. They could sign you for that much. I'd love for them to sign me. Exactly for that much. right. I'm like, a great locker room presence. D- yeah, you are. But look at your hair and. Let me tell you, if any team needs a good locker room presence right now, it's, it's the Vancouver Canucks. <laughs> um, year two, which is in 24-25, that is 2.3 million. Could be worse. Could be worse. Could be worse. Year three, 25-26, it's $4.76 million. And that is also the cap hit for 26-27. Yep. Uh, so those are where they really got to be careful. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to have any big extensions up by then. I would hope not. Well, you think about it. I think you're only going to have two years left of Kuzmenko and Besser. Oh, that's right. So those are two guys who are going to be coming up. Um, you, we'll see what the future holds for Vasily Pat Colson and yeah. Lander. Um, oh, hogs, Atu Ratu. We'll see what happens with him. I forgot they have him and Bo from the Islanders from the Horvat trade because yeah, uh, they got Bavillier in that too. Yeah, uh. Yeah, that's going to be weird uh, those next couple of years. But then the um, salary that they're paying throughout right. is the same cap hit for 20, uh, 27, 28, and 28, 29, 29, and 30, and 30, 31. So basically the last half of this buyout, they're paying just what the cost is. 2.1. Yeah bad especially when they're paying like 4.7 million for the (laughs) two years prior to that haul that's that's more than an eric and branson yeah that is ben sherat right there that is that is ben sherat oh my god wow think Uh. instead of having nobody you could have had ben (laughs) sherat Well, you know, the Coyotes need to hit the cap floor, so they there is a special UFA out there now. Yeah. Um, they could use so, a captain. They could use a captain. <laughs> so OEL is certainly going to go to Florida, mm-hmm. whether it's the Panthers or the Lightning, and he is going to be phenomenal again. Oh, yeah. And then it, some team's going to sign him to like a three year deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Well, how old is he now? What is he 33? Okay, so now he, he's starting to get up there for a defenseman. That's hmm. Because, uh, I mean, let's. Oh, man. He's only 31. Oh. Oh, so his oh. has been like okay. Ow, that's he, that's that's sharp. That's like depressingly sharp. Of yeah, decline. Yeah, that 
just makes me feel bad. Yeah, same. Because the dude, when he was, like, when he was our age, oh, was he not one of the best defensemen in the entire NHL when he was our age? Was, like, shit, bro. phenomenal, yeah. It's yeah, just, so. that's, God, it's brutal. That, And he's a player that we love. Oh, God, yeah. Like, you think of defensemen that are notable names in the nhl that people just always enjoy watching perennially yeah, like there was a charm with him being on the the coyotes all those years when they were bad too like and he was still putting up everything and he was putting up good numbers and he, and he stayed with the team through all the turmoil and stuff like that so yeah i, I hope he can rebound again potentially with another team on a, a one-year deal mm-hmm. we'll see where that is uh that brings us to our last topic columbus could use a third pair left shot (laughs) uh i am okay with not taking on a wheel (laughs) okay this is just 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 put that out there put that out there you want his you know uh potential comeback to to be under mike babcock okay you say that no i'm like no yeah, no, I would rather I would rather it absolutely be with a John Cooper or yeah, a Paul Maurice. John Cooper, Paul Maurice. Uh a, a Bruce Cassidy. Uh Rod Brindamore. A Rod Brind yeah, who is uh, up for Hockey Hall of Fame inductions. Now we didn't have that on our list, but that is coming up, isn't it? Yeah, we could talk about that next podcast. Yeah. Uh the last topic though, um your buddies in Buffalo, and uh, one of uh, one of my hometown hometown favorites. Yeah. Um. So I I heard about this the other day. I was literally just kind of like sleepily scrolling through Twitter when I saw this. Right. Um. Speaking of the ECHL, the affiliation between. The Buffalo Sabres and the Cincinnati Cyclones is uh, is coming to an end. It makes too much sense. There's a team in Columbus in the NHL. There's a team in Cleveland. There's a team in Cleveland in the American Hockey League. There's it's right there. Cincinnati. Why wouldn't you do it? Come on. It's... I want it. I want I it want... I want the full state connection. That would be cool. It would be so awesome. It'd be brilliant because then we could still like see, you know, I know that the ECHL is it's, you know, I don't pay, I don't pay as much attention to ECHL prospects. Well, I mean, so like you don't really get prospects in the ECHL a ton. Usually, it's the majority of your like you'll ECHL usually get like maybe are... one or two prospects playing in the ECHL. Like Sebastian Kosa was playing in in the E, uh, yeah, this year actually, uh, just because they knew that they could get him, like, guarantee him starts there. But usually, right. a lot of time it's it's guys who are undrafted, who are coming out of college, or coming overseas. Yeah. Who who want to try and, and and establish something, you know, maybe get to the AHL level and and whatnot. Uh, and the the only still reason I that is, is big. I mean, you think about a, a guy who who battled through uh, the ECHL at one point of their career would be Trent Vogelhuber. Trent did it. Um, Benner was forced to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pretty much, wasn't he? Like. Jordan Bennington was kind of forced to do that. Um, you talk about the college guys that do that. You know, uh, a lot of guys that I went to school with and got to watch, um, they went right to the E after they graduated. Um, both of the Craggs brothers, and they, a lot of them went to the Walleye because it's right there. Mm-hmm. A lot of them went to Toledo just because it's right there. Yeah. But you think of, like, for me... I think of the Craggs brothers, because uh, both Lucas and Sam went to the Walleye. Uh, Tyler Spezia went to the Walleye, and he's now in Grand Rapids. He's got an AHL deal. Yeah, Grand Rapids now. Yeah. Um, 
And it's just, you know, you got to be, if you want to make a living with this sport, the NHL is your best bet. And that, like, in terms of North American hockey, right? Mm -hmm. To make the biggest living that you can playing professional hockey, the NHL is the dream come true because that's your biggest payday. Yeah, no doubt. Because when you look at the when you look at the ECHL and below, it's a lot like double A baseball stadiums on down. Yeah. And the horror stories that have come from those minor league clubs in baseball. Dude, just watch Bull Durham. <laughs> just watch Bull Durham or yeah. like there's I know John Boy Media has a lot of those, uh, and like the Farm to Fame guys, and mm -hmm. um, a few other shows, episodes of shows that they've had where they've brought on guys that have talked about their minor league experience, mm -hmm. and how it's just no, yeah, it's hell, it's just garbage. Uh, Trent Vogel Huber. After graduating from Miami of Ohio, played two regular season games for Springfield Falcons after he signed a deal with the, the organization, mm -hmm. then played 34 games in the E with Evansville before being called up to Springfield again, mm -hmm. and he played the rest of his career in the American Hockey League. He really he never got a sniff up here. Never. He played some preseason games. Okay. Never right an NHL regular season game. Because I was thinking that just makes me think back to Ryan. Because I watched him play like, in Columbus in a preseason game once, but right, and that just makes me think back to Crager, you know, mm -hmm. bringing it full circle with the Golden Knights. I think he only played like ten to twelve games with Columbus. He played some NHL games with the Penguins. I remember that, but yeah, he he didn't have a long NHL career either, but. It's hard thinking about your career American League guys mm -hmm. and just remembering that while half of those rosters are guys that are signed to the big club and, you know, more than likely are going to make their shot and establish themselves up there. A lot of guys just don't. A lot of guys really don't. And, you know, the American Hockey League... Uh, if you're on like an AHL deal, you're making solid money. You're making like 70, 80, 90 grand. Yeah. Not bad. Shit. I'd, I'd like to make that kind of money right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Um, but when you get down to the ECHL and especially when you get down even below that, it's, it's you have guys that are. Live. You have guys that are barely bringing home 500 bucks a week. Yeah. It's not, it's and, not an easy way to live. And this is, the, this is the problem with the accessibility of this sport and the financial aspect of the accessibility to this sport. Mm -hmm. Because skates aren't cheap. Mm -hmm. The way sticks are made now, they're absolutely not cheap. No have, equipment is cheap. You have to get pads. You have to get helmets. You have to get, you know, so much stuff. All the money that, that's invested in it. That ice. just that just buries like just buries your body in this suit, yeah. uh, in this like mech suit, right? You're spending thousands and thousands of dollars just on your equipment alone. Yeah. Forget if you're a skate a goalie, right? Like, how much did your parents spend on you? A lot, a lot of money. And a that's... lot of Christmas gifts back then, Jake. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the thing when, because we know the draft is coming up in a couple of weeks, right? And we're gonna make this a whole full circle thing to wrap this up. Because the draft's coming up in a couple of weeks, and we always hear people say, oh, these are a bunch of spoiled brats. 
that get drafted in the NHL. Yeah. It's really not that. No. They're not spoiled. Their parents are investing pretty much like a college fund and 20 medical insurance policies and like yeah putting a second mortgage on a house <laughs> that's all for your hockey career mm -hmm. and so that's nice. and you have to be the luckiest of the lucky to even get considered to be drafted into the National Hockey League as a prospect like we talked earlier about Jesper Bratt, the guy who fully took advantage of his opportunity and has developed into a star. Like, it is a privilege to be drafted in the sixth round. Sixth round sixth. out of seven rounds, guys. Think about how many sixth round picks you've never heard of. Yeah. Who go on to do nothing in their career? They they don't play in the NHL. They play but in Europe. They play in Europe. They play is, like yeah. It is unbelievable you're unbelievably fortunate if you get selected there yes even if you play one game yeah yeah that one game could set you for life and there's a big reason why when these guys get their big big money contracts that's just why a lot of those signing bonus money things that's why a lot of that is given to their families mm -hmm. It's given back as a thank you for investing in my life. It's why a lot of players, when you really boil it down and actually look hard at it, a lot of times, like, like don't get me wrong, a lot of players do think about quality of team, coaching, et cetera, yeah. when they make a decision. But more often than not, family is very, very high a priority when making a decision like uh, Johnny Gaudreau signing with Columbus. Mm -hmm. Everybody and their brother was like, why didn't you go to the Devils? And then the Devils are good this year. Well, that's a mistake. Well, who are you to decide if it's a mistake? Right. You're not him. You don't know what you specifically need at this moment in it's time. Not, it's not your life to live. Yeah. And he has a life to live, and he wants to live it here. He has a life outside of his NHL job. Mm-hmm. With a wife and a child. Who are, I'd imagine, the two biggest factors. Yeah. In his decision. And that's okay. That's 200% okay. okay. That's I, like... I, know, I know it's, I know sometimes we get caught up in the emotion, and, and I understand that as, as sports fans, but it's okay. It's okay. You know? As much as we love to think of professional athletes as like this huge tier above who we are as fans and spectators they're people they're people there's people yeah i always try to ask people to not idolize everybody and don't get me wrong there's there's nothing wrong with having idols in your sports fandom yeah like i i mean it so like i had this conversation with my sister the other day because Funny enough, the, the term idol. Uh, the weekend came out with that HBO show, The Idol. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not going to lie. It's fucking terrible. <laughs> and uh, my sister was asking me about it, and she was like, what do you think about it? I was like, I'm not a fan of it. And then <sighs> we had a conversation, and it's like, and that's okay. It's okay. You don't need to idolize everybody and, and come strong to someone's defense over everything. And, like, I think sometimes... You know, we do it with athletes, we do it with entertainers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we we analyze everything so so closely. We we sometimes lose sight of the fact that they're just just people. It's like, yes, the whole idea around being able to play a sport for a living is a privilege. The mm -hmm. whole idea of learning how to act or be in a movie, or go on Broadway. Mm -hmm. You know, that's such an amazingly talented thing to have the privilege to do, to mm -hmm. be in a huge rock band and go on big tours. Yeah. Uh, and do that kind of thing. 
to be a huge famous musician, but it all comes down to investment in wanting to pursue that. You can be naturally gifted at something, and at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter if you don't put in the work, if right. you don't have the resources. If you don't have the resources, if you don't have the support system, the help. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's especially true for professional hockey players, for a lot of athletes, really. Because I get it. If yeah. you're if you're if you're a soccer or a baseball player, all you kind of need is a stick and a ball, or a ball and two things to set as goalposts. Yeah, right. Which is part of like, why it's such a popular sport because it's so easy to play. They're it's easily so accessible, like that. Sure. Yeah, it's it's the most successful sport in the world. Yeah. It's an accessibility thing. Yeah. It's a it's financial by, it's accessibility. It's the most thing. popular sport and will probably always be. Yeah. Also, it's so much fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I I've never had that much fun watching soccer personally, but like it's I love it. You know what I mean? Love it. Got the Crystal Palace t-shirt on right now. Love I it. I see that. Nice. I do. I am rep. I'm repping our boys, as I do. Um, but like that's the thing. It's accessibility. It's privilege. It's devotion from both you and your family. You got to have the support for it. The support system is incredibly important. And, and getting back to the original topic, I think Cincinnati would be cool. It would be great. It, it'd be support systems columbus cleveland and cincinnati that's an excellent support system all across the board as you know a unit for as an organization goes i think it's i think it's a slam dunk it it shouldn't even really be a question they, no. they i would hope the mcconnell's are in touch with whoever runs um i don't know what the arena is called now but it used to be called u.s bank arena um yeah. I would hope they're in touch with whoever owns that building and whoever's like the big owners with that team. The thing I always thought that would be interesting would be like if they do go through with this one way have a preseason game in Cleveland and have a preseason game in Cincinnati. Absolutely. I mean, Vegas did that with games in Utah. Yeah. And, you know, I think I think that's a big thing to not just like grow your local fan base but like you know with a team like vegas which is the mm -hmm. first pro sports team in that area grow you, it uh, you know nearby places yeah you needed to grow it away. in you know in states where it's not really prevalent right mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and vegas did that and I hope to see Columbus do that. So. I do too. Hmm. I like that. It's a good episode. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was good to see you again, dude. Like, God, it's been a week and a half. Yeah, I wonder whose fault that is. I mean, we're both at fault for that. More or less this time. <laughs> we, both, we both have our faults, but we both have our successes with this. Yeah, look. Uh, this is the what would be was it? Looking for all looking for the guy who did this. <laughs> <laughs> look at it. Look at a missing poster on a milk cart on a carton of milk, right? And it's just a picture of us. Oh, I wonder who that could be for. I, wa I wonder, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck! I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> I missed you, man. I really did. Oh, I missed you too, man. Okay. Um. Yeah, we're gonna so I can go upstairs and do my thing. <laughs> yeah, we got to wrap this up, and we'll see you when we see you. Um, we have a Stanley Cup champion in Vegas, baby. Love y'all. And now it's off season mode. Let's chill. J. Jake Jackets, a podcast for fifth liners and all puckheads around. 
all the guys on Twitter at Snake Garinger, G A R R I N G E R, and at By J Ashdown. And subscribe on YouTube or wherever you listen. March on. March on.